We turn our attention to the Qatar Sussex Stakes and we always build this race as a, a duel on the downs or certainly have over the years and we've very much got another one this year given the presence of the 2000 Guineas winner Churchill and of course of the mighty Ribchester who won the Queen Anne when last seen. He also ran in this race last year Chris and we can uh, pick that up. This is his run in the Sussex Stakes last year. We're just going to Pick him out, just hiding in behind the, mm. the Gurkha at this stage in there. And he gets something all what, trapped in a pocket to an extent. He has to switch out behind the likes of Galileo Gold and, and behind the, the likes of the Gurkha just to get a run. Eventually, you'll see him tongue longing out. Here he comes, but he's lost a, perhaps a length or two here. He does fly home. He does. It was billed as a jewel on the downs last year again. Mm. That seems to have been the tagline that has been put on the race in recent times. And he almost spoilt that jewel, didn't he? He, did. he was maybe the horse that had been ignored a little bit in the build-up to it last year with all the talk of the Gurkha and Galileo Gold. But he came through with a strong run. And if he'd have got a clearer passage, then I think he, he might well have won on he, this occasion. And he was a touch wayward, we saw there, under mm. pressure. He seemed like a horse who was learning throughout that race. Uh, subsequently, he's really come into his own with a, an excellent run in the QE2 at the end of last year. And this year, he's beaten all before him in the UK for all the... He did run out at a maiden and things didn't go quite to yeah. plan. This was his performance on UK reappearance in the Lockinge. Uh, just keep your eye, actually, on, on Toscanini, who's here, Red Hat. Now, he is in there as the pacemaker, but it doesn't all go to plan. Right in the no. middle, in the all blue of Godolphin, Ribchester comes out smartly, and he ends up having to go forward and, and make all here, and, and he just, just do, does just that. Yeah, I think he sort of enjoyed the way that he was ridden, actually, in the mm. lock-inch in the end. It, I don't know whether it was the plan or not, but it was assumed that Toscanini was in there as the, the pacemaker, and having dwelt in the stalls, didn't really work. And there he is at the back, whereas um, out in front, disputing that gallop, is Ribchester. And he's very impressive in the way that he goes about it. Are you highlighting where he's going to go? I like that line. He yeah. doesn't do it quite as marked now, as that. No, so I, didn't, I run out of room at the bottom of the screen, but he ends up coming <laughs> a little bit over steadier. that, well, otherwise he'd hit the rail. But he, he does drift over, and... He's, he's a horse, you can see he's, he's trying to be straightened up here, but he's a horse that doesn't, under pressure, run straight as an arrow as a, as a rule of thumb. No, he doesn't. I, and we'll see the Queen Anne as well, and he's, he's the same that day. But you've got to like the way that he hits the line. He, once he's got that rail to race against, he, he does go pretty straight. I do wonder whether they'll look to try and um, be a little bit more prominent with him this time because he, he seems tractable to that than he, than he was last year and maybe get him to the front and across to that rail a little bit earlier. It'll be interesting to see tactically how it goes because we do have a pacemaker apiece for the big contenders it would yeah. seem. Toscanini is the, the running mate in many ways for Ribchester and Churchill I think has got Lancaster Bomber in there. Not that Lancaster Bomber should be dismissed Abs in his own right. Absolutely not, ba not based upon that performance from him in the St James's Palace. Let's just have a look then at, at the start to the Queen Anne. Uh, Toscanini and actually Dutch Uncle who was the, the pacemaker for Lightning Spear. They come out, they set a, a pretty blistering gallop in truth. You mm. can see Toscanini in the red hat sweated up and, and it was always the plan for him to go over and track over to that side to give Ribchester something to aim at yeah. and again late on he showed that he does want yeah. something to aim at because again he gets wayward under pressure. But the front the, the pace making tactics worked on this occasion yes. didn't they with Toscanini you can see that he's got across and he's got to the other side of Ribchester and he has given him something to aim at um, he's given him a good enough lead into the race that they, they went very quick as you say probably too quick but once Ribchester gets there, he does wander around initially to his left and later on to his right. And once he's got a horse that gets to him, I think he's just idle, really. Mm. I think once he gets in front, he kind of thinks he's done enough and he's looking for a bit of company. And once something gets there, he drifts back across towards them and wants to race them, wants to beat them. There's nothing wrong with this horse's attitude in any way. Yeah. For all that he does meander around a little bit, I wouldn't hold that against him. It's just a little bit of a trait that he's got. But when something gets to him, he will go again as he did there. And we know what a classy performer is and that he really is the one to beat. Would he be an even better horse if he was completely sound mentally in, the, in that he did run straight as a die and was even more professional than sometimes he is? Of course he would. If he, if he wasn't doing that, then, then there would be a little bit more there. But I suppose the main point is it isn't stopping him winning no. at the highest level. And he's beating those that come up against him. You look at horses such as Lightning Spear, who he just keeps on getting the better of. Yes. And sometimes Lightning Spear has looked a bit unfortunate. But on balance now, you just have to say that Ribchester is a, a fair bit better horse than, than Lightning Spear is. 
Uh, we, or plenty, would have assumed coming into this race, the Sussex Stakes, that were Churchill turning up, he would be turning up an unbeaten horse. That wasn't the case. He was beaten by Barney Roy in this instance. And there he is. And he's following stable mate, Lancaster Bomber. There he is, who, who reopposes here. This doesn't want to work. And a little bit further away from the, from the other one. There he, there he blows. And it's un look, it was unfortunate because we were, thought we were dealing with a potential superstar when they do get beaten and, and they, they have a blemish on that unbeaten record. But he doesn't, just, he doesn't pick up, does he, as well as normal? No, he doesn't. I, I don't know what the reason for this flat performance was, really, but that's what it was. It, it was a flat performance and he didn't give his running and he's not stretching out great late yeah. on, doesn't appear. So maybe there was just some sort of little ailment. I, I don't really know. But I suppose the, the point with this horse is he has a little bit to prove on the back of that. He'd been good before that in uh, the Guineas. And I think that you look at those efforts and he was a really exciting horse. And sometimes you do just have to forgive horses a bad run. They can have a blot on the copybook and then come back. And he might well be able to do that. Ribchester is the much more solid horse and he doesn't have to bounce back. He arrives here on the back of career best performances. But it would be folly, I think, to completely dismiss Churchill. And if he gets back on track, then he's going to be a threat because he's a, a different form line, a different horse for Ribchester to get the better of. And of course, he'll be getting weight from Ribchester as well. Yes, absolutely. And that form line that Chris speaks of in the Eclipse was, was no bad thing, given what Barney Roy did there, being beaten just a nose late on by Ulysses, who was subsequently throwing that form to an extent as well not too long ago. I just want to ask you about the track. Which horse is it going to suit better? We've seen Ribchester getting beaten in this race last year. He's a horse that tends to Im improve throughout the race the further he goes because he can be a bit wayward and then he picks up and goes again. Will that hinder him, that trait, at a track like Goodwood? Will people be looking and thinking, Goodwood, it might just suit Churchill that little bit more than Ribchester? Uh, it, it, you could take that view. You could easily take the other view that Rib Ribchester's been there and when he ran there, he produced what at the time was a career best performance. Churchill's not been there, so you're guessing with him. So I don't think the track can be put forward as an issue for Ribchester. If anything, it's one of the aces that he holds over Churchill in the fact that he's been there, he's got the experience of it, and he's run an absolute cracker there. Mm. Well, holding the ace cards as far as the standout horse in the race goes is Ribchester's trainer, Richard Farhi. And not too long ago, I spoke to him reflecting on a mighty performance at Ascot and looking forward to the Qatar Sussex Stakes. I, I just think this guy's got everything, you know, he can go on any ground. I don't think the round track will bother him. Uh, he was a little bit unlucky in the in the Sussex last year where he, he got himself in a position where it didn't suit. I mean, the, the winner and the second were in front of him and he was just a little bit keen in the race, but that's nobody's fault. It, it happens in race and it was part of his growing up in his, in, in his makeup. I, I, I don't see it being a problem this year at all now, you know. And he's a better horse, you'd say, a year on <coughs> than he was, say, Goodwood last year. Did you always have that in mind for him, Chester? Did you always think, late three-year-old into his four-year-old career, he's going to be a better horse? Yeah, we always felt physically and mentally he would he would get better. Um, look, I don't know whether he'll retire at the end of the year, but he's a horse that could be even better next year. Yeah. You know, he's not the finished article 100% yet, but as the season goes on, he, his work is, is, is good. But it's, it's his mind that we're, we're more worried about. We know he's got raw talent and ability, but we're keeping his mind right the whole time. And look, John Murphy does a fantastic job with him now. And John, John's been a big part of him. And Billy looks after him, he's a big part of him. But I'm growing more in confidence with this horse every time I see him work and race. And, you know, it's, he's, he's talented, you know. He's, he's probably, he is a champion, you know.